everyone. Welcome to another great webinar from cpaacademy.org. My name is Vaughn Smith. I will be your moderator for today's session on best practices for maintaining an effective com complaint management program. So glad you all have joined us today. We have a lot of great information for you from a great presenter, and we really appreciate you being with us. We want to make sure everything's working. You can hear my voice. You can see that title slide that's up there on your screens, and you can let me know that we're working out okay in that questions panel that should be on the right-hand side of your interface. Go ahead and click on it. Say hello. Tell us where you're tuning in from, and let me know if at any time you're having any issues during the session. Uh, technically, go ahead and let me know right here where you're typing into, and I'll do my best to answer as quickly as possible. There's quite a few of you in here today. Might take me a moment to get around to you, but sit tight. I will address you as quickly as I can. And of course, we encourage you to uh, ask questions at any time to our presenter during this session. Uh, if we have time at the end, we'll try to answer some questions. If we don't, that's no worries. We'll go ahead and send a full report to them afterwards so they can see any items that may have been missed. So go ahead and ask away. All right, let's see where we are tuning in from. We are coming in from uh, Auburn, Auburn, New York. We also have New Orleans. We've got Pittsburgh. We've got Salt Lake City, Utah, and New York. All right, wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Looks like we're tuning in from all over. Let's talk about credit. This session qualifies for one CPE credit. You need to remain logged in for at least 50 minutes and answer our polls. We have four for you today. You only need three for credit, but answer them all because it's just a whole bunch of fun to answer polls. And hit that submit button so it goes ahead and registers for your credit. Uh, we have some handouts for you to download and follow along with. Uh, actually, just one handout there in the handouts panel. And you can also find that in your CPA Academy account. Your CPA Academy account is where you'll find your issued CPE credit within about 24 hours. You'll have a recording of the session and, of course, an evaluation. We always love to hear from you, so fill that out after we're done. All right, I've covered everything on my end, so let's go ahead and welcome our presenter. Sonia, it's all yours. Take it away. Perfect. Thank you so much. I appreciate the introduction, Vaughn, and thank you all for joining our presentation today on, again, maintaining an effective complaint management program. My name is Sonia Dopp, and I am the head of sales engineering here at Quantivate. I've worked in the banking industry for a little over 23 years now, and the focus of my career has been primarily in compliance management and audit and process management. A number of those years was with software solution, solutions, just like Quantivate, and I consult with financial organizations on finding efficient and effective solutions to business processes, such as complaint management. So throughout those years, and of course still today, complaint management is a huge pain point for many of you, uh, as I can imagine as well, which is why probably you're here. Uh, one of my primary duties is to assess where those pain points are, in your processes and help to evaluate solutions that will increase efficiency and fill in any gaps that can cause risks to the organization. So in today's session, we will be taking a walk through some of the best practices on how to effectively manage complaints within your organization and some important elements of maintaining an effective program that are commonly overlooked. So because there is so much risk, with customer complaints, consumer complaints. It is so important to have a strong program with strong controls to protect your organization. Uh, when you manage this process manually, or if you do it electronically, if you have a software solution or if you have forms, there are key elements to any successful program, no matter how you do it. And that, you know, that just can't be overlooked. So during today's session, please consider your own program and use the information to assess gaps you may need to address and take note of any actions you may want to consider for change later on. So with that, we'll get into it and let's take a look at the agenda for today. So the first thing we'll, we will be covering is elements of an effective program. So your overall program, looking at the key elements of what you should have included uh, for any effective program, really, this is not just for complaints, but these are elements for any effective program. Elements of an effective complaint management process. That's the second thing we'll be covering today and really looking and diving into the steps of what you need to consider within your processes. The importance of regulatory compliance review. So, so important that compliance is involved in the complaint management process. 
Uh, fourth, we'll look at analytics and risk assessment of complaints. Are you doing them? Should you be doing them? We're going to take a look at that. Uh, and then retention of complaint documentation. Again, something so important. I can't prove it unless you do prove it, right? You have to have the docu documentation to show what you're doing, what your process is, and of course, all of the documentation for what you're doing for each complaint. And then finally, risks of non-compliance. And again, as Vaughn had mentioned, if at the very end of today's presentation, we have time for uh, for our questions, we'll, we will address those live. Uh, otherwise, we'll we'll take note of those and and gather them up and, and answer your questions after the webinar. Uh, we do have a lot of content to go over today, so I'm not sure if we'll have time, but we'll try our best. So first and foremost, uh, I wanted to always start with a polling question and just gather information from you all out there on how you're doing. And uh, the first polling question that we have is, how would you rate your existing complaint management program today? So the first is amazing, can't get any better. I'm super perfect and everything is just great. Never had any issues. I don't worry about it at night. I'm amazing. Second one, pretty good, better than most. You probably have maybe a B plus, A minus, and you may worry from time to time. Number three, being okay probably maybe needing some updating. Uh, number four, not so good, I'm a little worried about it. Maybe you're new to the organization too and just taking over this and you're missing something or you feel like you may be missing something. And five, terrible, almost non-existent. Please, please help me. I need all the information I can get. So go ahead and answer those questions and we'll take a look at what our answers are. And so far, a lot of you are right, right in the middle there. And I know we're gonna need just a couple more moments to let everybody cast their vote. So I'll let Vaughn let us know when that time is over. Hey, yeah, we're gonna just want a few more seconds to get that voting threshold up. We're getting really close, so go ahead and get your votes in. We usually keep it open for about 60 seconds, uh, but we're gonna keep it open just a little bit longer. Okay, I think we're good now. So let's go ahead and close this poll down in three, two, and one. So closing the poll and yeah, let's go ahead and share the results so everyone can see. Yeah, looks like majority right there in the middle. Oh, excellent. Yeah, 47% say, okay, probably need some updating. So this is a great session for most of you. Um, for those that are in the terrible, <laughs> please help me. Again, lots of great content that you will be able to go through step by step in looking and addressing your own program and we'll get you some help today. So thank you for answering those questions and we'll go ahead and move on to the next. So again, first on our agenda is elements of an effective program. For your complaint management program, I've listed out those elements here, and this comes from a numerous variety amount of sources out there, including the CFPB and all of the regulatory citations. Uh, you know, what kinds of things do you need to have in an effective complaint management program? First and foremost, the bones, the structure of your program are your policies and your procedures. Having a policy that outlines, I do have a complaint management program. We will do these things and making promises on that document. And please make sure one of the things that I want to make that I want you to consider are, am I doing what I'm promising in my policies? And your procedures, of course, having written documentation and steps for your, for your team members and staff to be able to know what to do. The second is board and management oversight, having reporting, going to your board to identify higher risk complaints, uh, issues that they may need to be aware of. That's very important. Compliance regulatory review. Uh, it is compliance looking at your complaints and ensuring that there aren't any regulatory issues or com uh, compliance issues that need to be addressed. Uh, and then fourth is the consideration of risks. Uh, of course, as we talked about this in the very beginning, complaint management uh, can be a very risky business. So when you do get somebody that's unhappy, the risks are all over the place. And we're gonna talk about that near the end of our presentation. The next one down is service provider oversight. So your vendor management program, the service providers that you use, that does need to be part of your program and considered in your complaint management program. Monitoring and audit, so, so, so important that you're documenting and, and, tra and tracking all of the complaints that you get and that you're making sure that your complaint management pro program is part of your audit process. Periodic training for staff, again, a very important element. People need to know what they need to know. 
and that everybody's doing things consistently. And then the last one is effective change management. Considering organizational changes that may impact your program, complaint management needs to be part of that. So in the next slide here, we'll really dive into each one of those and talk a little bit more about the things that you need to consider. So for policies and procedures, again, needs to be part of your compliance program, your CMS, uh, how you're going to address those complaints as they come in, how you're going to categorize them, and which ones need to be escalated. Procedures and processes, that's another one that needs to be documented as well. Reviewed and updated periodically. So you need to make sure somebody gets their eyeballs on these once in a while. This is a great time to do that uh, since you're watching this presentation today. Take the time to review your documentation, make sure you're promising and doing the same thing that you're promising and that you're updating it on a, on a regular basis, maybe a regular cadence. A lot of people say best practices annually. I would have to agree with that. And that your process is defined and, and it, it's consistent across your business lines. So there isn't just one department that's doing something differently than this other department. Everybody should have the same methodology of submitting complaints. Everybody should be uh, gathering the same information, categorizing them the same, and there should be a centralization to that process across all business lines. Now, the next section is board and management oversight. It is so, so important that no matter where you put it or where it's at, that your board and management do receive periodic recording. Uh, I know from my own past experience as a compliance professional, at least quarterly for me was always considered to be a best practice. And I included that in my compliance, my quarterly compliance update to the board so that if there were any high risk areas or high risk complaints that needed to be addressed or that the board should be aware of that, I would be adding that to my presentation so that that was you know, something that they can see, but also the numbers and the categories, are, are there any trends that the board should be aware of that would make the decision-making for other departments as well? That, you know, you make your decisions based upon the information that you see. So you have to let management know what's going on so that if there is a product or service or maybe even a location that is impacted by uh, complaints that everyone's aware. The other thing is updating regarding regulatory or legal issues. So there, if there is something, a serious issue, that is uh, going to cause you, you know, exam issues in the in in the future, or perhaps a legal issue where you might need to get legal involved. That is very important for the board and management to see. Next on the list is the compliance and regulatory review. We're going to dive into this a little deeper later on in the presentation, but this is so so important that it's part of your program that you have somebody that's knowledgeable and that is designated for complaint reviews. Even if it's something simple, it's important for them to have their eyeballs on it to be able to make that determination and check a check a box and say, yes, I reviewed this. There is no major regulatory concerns. And then it can be designated to someone else for uh, remediation, if that's the case. But compliance does need to have their eyeballs on all of your complaints. Identification and remediation of regulatory legal or legal issues that should be handled by somebody that is knowledgeable. So. They have to have their eyeballs on it to identify it, and they also have to have it in their hands to remediate it and take the necessary steps to protect the institution from regulatory scrutiny and legal issues as well. And then, of course, compliance should also be monitoring and tracking complaints and trends. So if you see a bunch of complaints in one specific area, such as, um, you know, TILA RESPA, maybe you do mortgage lending, you're seeing a lot of complaints about your mortgage services or something like that, those kinds of trends are really important for a compliance professional to be able to have their eyes on and be able to know when there's issues so that they can put the proper controls in place. Considerations of risk. This is one that I see oftentimes not involved in the complaint program for many of the clients and people that I've talked to uh, over the years. This is so important to be able to identify new potential and emerging risks from your complaints. This is visibility into what people are saying about you. It's very important to take that information seriously, no matter how small it may be, or if this person may seem just like they had a bad day, you should always take that information into consideration for how you can do better and get more business, because that's what we want to do, is get more business. Risk rating complaints based upon impact to the organization. Um, a lot of people aren't risk rating their complaints, but it is a very important part 
of an effective program to be able to identify this one is really risky. This one is really going to impact our organization or this one's small and it may not need as much you know, attention or time. It's important to be able to realize that so that when you're looking at your program overall in the course of a year, you can say I've only had one high risk complaint or zero high risk complaints in our opinion, right? Versus at the end of the year, maybe you have you know zero complaints overall. You need to be able to have a tracking mechanism for that. And then also risk should be considered during remediation. So when you're actually going through the process of remediating complaints, are you considering the risks involved and making sure to remediate not just the customer's complaint or the member's complaint, but also any gaps in your program that may have caused that complaint. Service provider oversight. So consideration of third and fourth parties involved. If you know your complaint is related to the fact that your ATM machine is never has money in it, you know that involves a third party, and you need to make sure that that's not due to a third party's error. And if it's just you just need to add more money, then that's the you know that's the resolution, right? But when you do have third and fourth parties involved, you need to be able to track and manage that activity as well. Because if you have common problems with a, a service provider, it's important for you to be able to look at that uh, when you go to look at their contract and follow up with them re related to the pricing of you know, a renewal and do you want to renew with them? Secondly, ensure appropriate action and follow-up takes place. So when there is a complaint that involves a third or fourth party, uh, you need to make sure that you're following up with the individuals at that third party provider and make sure that they're doing their part to remediate the actions as well. And then lastly, monitor trends involving service providers. And this also goes to alerting any vendor managers out there that own that relationship. Those people should be involved in that process and know what's going on. Monitoring and audit. So this is another big one, making sure you have a regular monitoring of complaint activity and remediation. Now, whether that's a centralized person within your organization or your compliance department, somebody needs to be looking at this on a regular basis. Best practice is monthly because oftentimes if you receive a complaint, you may wanna get that done within 30 days. If you're not looking at the tracking of complaints every 30 days, at least every 30 days, then you may miss something and it may cross a threshold of your desired uh, remediation timeframe. So regular monitoring of that activity and making sure that the remediation is timely is very important. And again, the designated individual or department responsible for those should also be ticking the time clock and, and seeing how many days has this complaint been open? Why have we not been responding to them? Somebody needs to be keeping their eyeballs on that to make sure that there is timely response because that's all part of the regulatory responsibility of the organization is to get back to clients regarding uh, any complaints in a timely manner. And then periodic evaluation of your program and process effectiveness. This can be done internally by an individual that is not responsible for complaint management or this also can be done via audit, should be included in your audit schedule to some degree. A lot of people put that into uh, maybe operations or if it's branch by branch or if it's overall in your compliance department, that does need to be looked at periodically from an independent perspective. Then training for your staff members, uh, ensuring training takes place regularly, uh, best practice annually. That needs to be something that everybody is aware of when you get new hires in, they need to be aware of their responsibilities for what happens if a customer comes in and complains? What do I need to do? Who do I need to tell? What form do I need to pull, fill out? If you have a software, you know, where, where's that button that I click to get to the place that tells me what I need to gather as far as information? You should have that training take place on a regular basis for all staff members that have access to the public. Also, training should be rule-based. So uh, the difference between uh, training a teller on how to handle a complaint if it comes through the door and come, they come to their teller window versus somebody that gets it on the phone, it really needs to be role-based uh, based upon what how their interaction is with the client and what their responsibility is. You know, the compliance officer's training is going to be a little bit different than the teller and so on and so forth. So make sure that your training is based upon the, where they're involved in your process and what their responsibilities are. Then effective change management, so important. Consider complaint management when organizational changes occur. 
So if you have any product or service, be aware that your complaint management process needs to be adjusted sometimes. Make sure that when there's organizational changes, uh, you know, based upon their hierarchy of people that are in charge of that parts of that process, such as, you know, maybe your compliance officer uh, who normally does the review of, uh, for compliance purposes, maybe they, you know, won a trip to Cabo and then decided not to come back. You know, they won a, lo won a lottery and just left suddenly. Who is going to be doing that work? So you need to make sure that you're making those adjustments accordingly. Additional training considered when processes or procedures change. So if you do change your process or your procedures, you need to make sure that that goes out to everyone and they have a chance to read it and get updated and throw away the old version so nobody gets confused. Have a centralized place for people to be able to refer back to that information and make sure that it's constantly kept up to date. I had an in instance where I had a client that did uh, implement a software solution for complaints, but they found over the next three or four months that they were still receiving forms emailed to them or placed on their desk that could have easily gotten lost. So make sure that your team members are aware when your process does change. And then be proactive about the risks of complaints when making business decisions. And that's again, why the reporting to management is so, so important. When you know you have an issue, make sure that everybody knows so that the appropriate departments can make those changes as necessary. So again, some actions to consider if, uh, if you're using this as a basis for reviewing your own program, check your policies and your procedures, make sure they're up to date and appropriate for your organization. If you've had significant growth, consider that within your policies and your procedures and make the changes as appropriate. Your board and management, go, go ahead and chain or take a look at any reporting that has been made and make sure that it's sufficient for your organization. Make sure you have a dedicated compliance professional to review complaints for regulatory issues. If you don't, involve compliance and make sure that filters to them for a review. Uh, review your risk program to ensure complaint, complaint management is considered. So make sure that your risk programs, your risk assessments do identify those emerging risks from complaints and identify any complaint management issues that may come up. Review your vendor management program and evaluate follow-ups with any vendors. Do you have a place to even talk about that or to document that? Uh, you may have a spreadsheet uh, on who is involved in a, in a complaint. Make sure your vendor managers are. If you're using a software, make sure they get notified when there's a complaint that involves your, your third parties. Ensure there's a regular cadence for monitoring and tracking complaints centrally. The centrally is the key. Make sure there's a central location for that that all of the complaints are logged and tracked in one place and you have somebody that is responsible for looking at that. Review your training, make sure it's up to date and that all the stuff they're looking at, all the information that they're reviewing are role-based and sufficient for their role and also up to date and with your current practices. And be sure your complaint management is included within your business decisions and organizational changes. So with that out of the way, we'll go ahead and move to the next uh, step, which is the elements of an effective complaint management process. Now, this is much different than your program because the keys to your program are the overall program holistically, looking at all the, the different things within a program, but your process is how you do the work. So your program is almost like the, the, the structure and this is how we're going to do it, but your process is the 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 step-by-step, -step, right? So we have another polling question here, and this one is related to the process. What areas of your current complaint management process would you say is the weakest? Uh, the first one on the list, identifying complaints. I'm not confident that we catch them all. Maybe you have social media and different things that you're thinking, oh, I don't know that I've considered that within my program. The second one, gathering and documenting meaningful data. There's no consistency. So, you know, this could be a, this is a major problem for a lot of the organizations that I talk to. It just feels like there's no consistency. Everybody's kind of doing their own thing. It's segregated and siloed. That's no good. We can't have that for complaint management. Uh, remediation of complaints and distributing information to others needs to be involved. Uh, so you're having trouble getting the right information to the right people. Tracking status and building reports. That might be another area that you're having problems. Or, you know, number five, you're perfect everything's great and you don't really need any help. Everything seems to be working fine. So go ahead and cast your votes um, on the polling question there. 
And it looks like we've got uh, the majority so far that are saying identification of complaints, which is not surprising, is one of their highest uh, highest areas of concern. I know we just have a uh, just a few more seconds here, so I'll let Vaughn let us know when the time is up. Okay, yeah, we are, well, it's almost been 90 seconds. So let's go ahead and get ready to close this down. So any last second votes, get them in, because we're closing down in three, two, and one. Let's close and yeah, pretty split. Let's go ahead and share that so everybody can see. There you are. All right. Yeah, it looks like 29% of you identification of complaints, but in a close second, gathering and documenting meaningful data, no consistency, not surprising at all. Um, and and also a close third. I mean, really, 2020, 20, 20% for all of them, except there's, you know, somebody out there that is perfect. So round of applause. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for that information. And so we are going to be diving into each of these areas individually. So we'll be talking about all of them. So everybody gets a little bit more information on how we can better structure our program and our processes. So the complaint management process, identify and gather complaints from all sources. That's number one. You need to be able to almost have a filter of making sure that all of the data is, and I'm using my hands, you can't see me, but all of the data is being filtered in and, and centralized to one person that is going to take that information and then move to the next step. It's so, so important to make sure that you've got that filter in place. And we're gonna be talking about some best practices for that. Uh, number two, submit your compliance. Uh, submit your complaints for compliance review and evaluation. Again, compliance needs to be involved in that. Number three, evaluate and distribute for remediation. So getting that to the right person, notifying the right people of the, of the complaint and who needs to be involved in the remediation process. Number four, research and remediate the complaint. We'll be talking about some best practices there. And then number five, review and uh, document your actions. So while you're going through that process, you should be, of course, retaining every call you make, every paper that's filled out, all of the information regarding your research, but you also have to make sure that it is retained centrally. So let's dive a little bit more into the process here, and we'll start with identifying gather complaints from all sources. So things you wanna consider for your program, you know, consider all of the in-person uh, complaints from each location. Does everybody do everything the same? Are they all, do they all have, uh, you know, the same training and know where to provide the information? Does it go to a supervisor? Does it go to the branch manager who then filters it up? However that's being done, the in-person needs to be really considered to make sure there's a consistent process in place. Phone and email, those are other methods that you might receive a complaint. Social media is just another one. The more social media platforms you have, the more you might have to monitor those areas to make sure that you're catching on, catching all of them. And then of course there's the Yahoo's and the Googles. Those are other areas that you wanna monitor to say, you know, I wanna know if somebody's upset, but you also, you know, there's reputational risk out there if they're just ranting and raving because they had a bad experience at your, at your organization. That's no good either. So we really need to make sure that you're gathering, identifying all the sources, even other electronic sources and making sure that they're all sourced into one spot. Ensure uh, consistent information is captured. So, so, so important. Whether you have a form or a software, it doesn't matter. Everybody should be gathering the same information and it should be required. So if you do have a form, try to make that electronic where they can't finish the form until it's done. If you have um, just a meanings of having an email, make sure that training is more, more periodic than than just annually, so they know which information they needs to capture. If you have a software, you can force that into the process where you're making for uh, certain fields uh, required. So they can't actually finish until they've submitted all the information that they need to. And then central person to be responsible for that. So whether it's one individual that takes all of the complaints and then gives them to compliance, or whether it is your compliance uh, person or department, it needs to be centralized that all complaints filter into one spot so then it can you can make sure that each one goes to compliance and gets the same treatment and process throughout second submit your compliance review and evaluation uh, so the compliance review again is very important you need to have a designated knowledgeable individual to be able to perform that review someone that understands the importance of regulatory issues 
consider consumer harm and other violations of law. That is, again, another reason that it's so important. That's part of your exams. So when examiners come in, they are going to be looking to see if there was any consumer harm. If there was any violations of law, how did you handle that? What are your policies and procedures look like? So that's why the compliance review is also a very important part of your program and your process. And then of course, your compliance review should include a recommendation of actionable steps that will protect the organization. Then you want to make sure that you evaluate and distribute for remediation. So again, that centralized person is going to be able to tag the right people to be involved, any service providers that may need to be involved, any third party vendor owners, any department heads, uh, if it's you know, related to a location, maybe the branch manager needs to be uh, you know, involved in that, maybe it's a person that keeps getting complaints. Whatever that is, it needs to involve the appropriate departments and personnel for insight and corrective action. And then of course you need to determine the business processes that are affected. So if, it, if it's affecting a business process, you need to see what, what was it about that business process that is the problem. Is it something that we did wrong or was it a miscommunication? Those need to be really, you know, need to be evaluated during your process to make sure that you're getting the right people that are involved in that business process, additional training if needed. And then research and remediate the complaint. So research should be, uh, it should involve the customers and members relationship and history. You need to make sure that you know who you're looking at. How long have they been with you? What locations do they typically go to? What products and services do they have? You wanna be able to make sure that your research does involve uh, detailed research on that particular person, what, if it is a customer or a member. If it's not, you don't really have any control about that, but you gather as much information as you can. And then you want to identify business processes, services, and products involved. So you wanna take a look at that and make sure that you're doing the remediation, not just to the complainant, but also to the business process or the service or the product. So if it's a disclosure that didn't really clearly identify the fee, you're gonna to wanna to make a change to that document or that process. Uh, so it's really important to identify all of those areas while you're doing your remediation. And then you wanna respond quickly to the complaint and communicate effectively. Uh, the more, the better. Phone call and an email, a phone call and a letter, whatever it is, it's always great as a best practice to make sure that even if you are doing a phone call to respond promptly to the complaint, that you follow up with a letter. Have that written documentation on your side to show when you did it, who you sent it to, and all of the information that you did for the remediation in a letter in writing. So, so important. Last but not least, uh, review and document your actions. So always a good idea as a best practice to have a secondary review of the remediation, have another pair of eyeballs look at it, whether that be your compliance department or a designated individual that is responsible for managing that process, have somebody else look at that to make sure not only did we document everything that we should, but we did the right steps, we're remediating all the things that we should, we've considered all the risk, compliance was involved and gave their, you know, their check mark or signed off on it, make sure that secondary review takes place to make sure that there was nothing in the process that was missed and then save your documentation to store centrally within your organization, have a central file, or if you're, if again, if you're using a software solution, um, there's a central place already built in for you, but make sure there's a central location where you save all that documentation. So when examiners do come in, you are prepared and you can just say, here's my file or here's the, you know, here's the electronic file of all of our complaints. We've uploaded everything to this file. You have everything in one spot. All right, so again, some actions to consider for your complaint management process. Review the sources and consistency of complaint information received and ensure they are filtered to a single individual or department. You need to have that funnel in place. And I know a lot of you, that was the top, top place where people are getting you know, tripped up. You look at your policies, your procedures. Uh, is everything the same? Uh, looking at it from a program perspective. But if you don't feel like you're getting consistency, then you need to make tweaks and adjustments and retrain your staff to make sure that you're gathering everything. Not only that, but looking at all the different outlets and the different ways that you can receive complaints. Uh, you know, at, at least if your regulator is sending you a complaint, you're getting that via mail or email and you have a methodology of knowing you're always gonna catch that, but other areas you might not. 
you know, hopefully all of your individuals are trained appropriately to filter that to you. So, so important. Verify compliance is involved in all complaints received and that violations of law or regulatory issues are monitored appropriately. Your compliance team needs to take a look at these and make sure that there are no regulatory issues. It's a huge part of the exam for them if you do receive those complaints. We're always crossing our fingers that we don't, but when we do, that, that is all monitored on the regulatory side. Compliance is looking at it. They're looking at trends and data, and it's important that that is regularly monitored for those types of issues and, of course, reported to the board. Uh, third, ensure all departments and personnel are involved as appropriate for complaints. So again, pulling in those key people and letting them know, whether it's via an email, uh, notifying everyone on one email chain for that complaint, uh, if you're using a spreadsheet that's centrally located, make sure they know to go look at it and that there was a complaint that they need to be aware of that impacts their branch or their department or their vendor, their third party, perhaps. Um, you need to pull in all those uh, people that need to be involved and that they're aware of the complaint. Ensure all departments and personnel are involved as appropriate for complaints. Oh, that's the one I just talked about. Monitor and track complaint resolution on a consistent cadence. Again, monthly is the best practice. Make sure that you're looking at that monthly to make sure that the resolution is being done on a consistent cadence and that it's 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 being done quickly, as, as quickly as you can. And if there was a reason that it wasn't done as quickly as it should have been, perhaps, that it's documented as to why. You know, maybe you're waiting for a third party response. Uh, let that be known, document that and monitor and track that activity regularly. And the last one, verify regular audits are completed based upon your volume and risk. So let's take a look at the next step here, importance of regulatory compliance review. This is a big one because when you do get a complaint that involves a regulatory issue or compliance review, examiners will look at it. So straight from the CFPB manual, um, you know, there are examination procedures. An effective CMS should ensure that an institution is responsive and responsible in handling consumer complaints and inquiries. Intelligence gathered from the consumer contact should be organized, retained, and used as part of the institution's CMS. The institution should be making a deliberate good faith effort towards resolution of each consumer complaint. So there it is right there. Uh, it's not black and white that you need to do things in this time frame. There are best practices that we put in place to make sure that we're doing this, that we're, it's, it's never, um, an examiner can't walk in and, and think, oh, they're not doing this. You don't, you wanna avoid that as much as you can. So this is where we're, we're geared towards on the regulatory side. This is part of our exam uh, procedures. They are going to be looking at our CMS and they are going to be looking at our complaints. So let's take a look at those regulatory requirements. So as far as your complaints, your consumer complaint response, this is what they're looking at for the regulatory side, that processes and procedures are appropriate. So again, part of your program is to have processes and procedures that are up to date, you know, promise, promises, promises. You have your doing it in your promised documents, which is a, your process documents, your procedures and your policies. Make sure that you're actually doing it that way and you have documented proof of that. Investigations and responses are reasonable. So make sure that your investigations uh, require that research uh, of the complaint and everything that's affected, the business processes and all of that good stuff. It all needs to be documented what you looked at and um, what you've done and that the responses are reasonable. So again, written documentation of your responses is the only way to make sure that you're able to prove that it was reasonable. So consider that from a perspective of a compliance professional. This is why it is, again, so important that compliance is involved in the, in the complaint uh, process. The next one down, complaints and inquiries are recorded and categorized. So we talked a little bit about this earlier. What information should you be gathering when a complaint is submitted? Those need to be categorized based upon specific information. Complaints are addressed and resolved promptly. So you need to make sure that your team has a time frame to look at. How long do we have to address these? When you receive a complaint, you should be taking action immediately. That single individual or department that receives those 
through your filter, right? All of those are coming to one spot, one person or one department that they're taking that and taking immediate action. There's no waiting a week. Take immediate action, even if it's a high risk complaint versus a moderate versus a low, always take those very seriously and take prompt action. Issues that involve regulatory issues or violations of law should be escalated. So this is where, again, not only compliance being very important to be able to look at these and identify those regulatory issues or violations, but they also need to be escalated even beyond that. So yes, you have a knowledgeable individual looking at that and remediating any regulatory issues or legal issues, but they also need to be escalated to management and to the board. It's important that the board is aware of those because come exam time, if there's any questions or issues, they're gonna wanna know that the board was notified and aware of any regulatory violations of law or issues. Uh, second one to the, uh, from the bottom there is management monitors issues and takes effective correction, corrective action as necessary. So you need to make sure that you're monitoring those and taking, taking track of each of those uh, uh, complaints and then taking effective correction, corrective action as necessary. So if there is any kind of trending relation to a specific regulatory issue, uh, you know, your compliance officer needs to take effective correct, corrective action on that. And looking at your overall CMS, you also need to make sure that you're making adjustments in the controls as necessary as well. And then trending data is considered for identifying weakness in the organization's CMS. So again, you need to make sure that you're making those appropriate adjustments to your controls, to your processes, even if it may not seem like it's a big deal, if you get two or three in one specific area, it's time to really dive down and make those remediations, not just about appeasing the client or the member, but also about uh, improving your processes and, and taking action on your CMS. Violations of law and consumer harm. This is another big one here. Uh, to identify the root cause of the violation. So when you do have a violation of law uh, or any consumer harm, even if it's potential, you need to look at the degree of which the weakness in the CMS could have contributed to that violation. So take a look at your CMS. Uh, if the root cause had been tied to one or more elements of your CMS, it's crucial and critical that you identify those deficiencies and um, make those a paramount uh, of, of adjustment in your CMS process. So those are going to be the ones that the examiners look at they want to see how it ties to your CMS and they want to see how you reacted to that. What kinds of changes did you make to make sure that this doesn't happen again? You need to identify the severity of harm caused. So this could be, you know, again, one of those risk rating situations where you need to say, yeah, it's a high risk, um, it's a high risk a complaint, but how much of a high risk complaint is it? So you may have a secondary rating scale for that where you're looking at how badly was it consumer harm did you cost them two thousand dollars versus ten thousand dollars versus maybe just twenty five dollars on a fee was there um was it monetary harm was it other kinds of harm you know you have UDEP considerations and you know equal lending and all of the regulatory issues that you could come up with and on the lending side you need to make sure that you're identifying the severity of that harm that was caused and also the type of harm that was caused. What type of harm was caused, you need to identify and categorize that so that from a regulatory perspective, you're able to identify where your problems lie. And the duration of the violation, this could have lasted for a long time, or maybe it was just a short time. Maybe you just put out a new disclosure and you realize only 10 people might have received that disclosure. Or has this been a disclosure that's been passed out to clients or members for the past two years? What is the duration of that violation? How long? What is the length of time over which that violation had occurred? Those are all things that you need to identify. And then, of course, lastly, the, uh, the pervasive witness of the violation ex itself, the extent that the violation um, of financial law or consumer law had uh, resulting in harm. So the effect is really the number, how many people were, uh, were affected by this by this um, violation or by this harm. So you really need to look at the overall number and make that part of your remediation. And then of course, remediate accordingly and document your actions. So when you're looking at the root cause, 
uh, where how the problem happened, where it came from, make sure that your remediation includes how you took a look at that and what you did to change it. Severity, you know, what did you do to remediate that based upon the severity and the type of harm and how long it took and the, per the pervasiveness. So when you're talking about uh, something that is like, you know, consumer harm or violation of law, you need to make sure that you're gathering all of that information, all of the customers or members or individuals that were involved in that and making sure if there is any remediation that you need to take, that it includes that entire group of people. So a perfect example of that is if there was a fee that was inappropriately um, uh, uh, disclosed, for example, and maybe your system is generating a different fee that's on the disclosure, you need to go out and find all of the people that were affected and then give them the money back because that's what the examiners are going to want to see that you did. So that also includes changes to your CMS. So make sure your CMS has been adjusted, controls are in place to remediate that action and that it's documented of what you've done and then response to the customer or member impacted, of course. So we do have another polling question here, and this is related directly to risk rating. So go ahead and get your, get your mouses ready or your fingers ready. Are you currently risk rating your complaints? Yes or no? Do you have a risk rating process in place for your complaints today? Or is that something that maybe you don't do today? It's, it's important to know uh, whether you should or shouldn't. Um, as a best practice, I believe that you should, but if you're not, it's something that is a huge takeaway from today, but go ahead and open up. We've opened up the polls for you, answer the question, and we'll see where we're at so far. It looks like most of you are on the no side currently, and we'll give everybody a couple more minutes to address the poll question, and um, Vaughn, you can let us know when we're ready. Couldn't get my mouse on that mute button to, to turn it off. All right, we are um, about 10 seconds away. Let's go ahead and get your votes in. This one's going a little quicker since yes or no question is always a little, little faster. So <laughs> that's great. So we're going to go ahead and close this poll down in three, two, and one. And this is poll three. We'll have one more after this. So just so you know, closing it down and let's share the results. 30-70 split. 30-70 oh, split. Yep. Most of you are not currently risk rating your complaints today. And that's not surprising. Again, I guess I, at the beginning of this presentation today, I think I mentioned that there's a lot of gaps in the program. And that's one of them. That's one of the things that I see people going, oh, no, I don't really risk rate them necessarily. Um, we're going to talk about why that's important now. So go ahead and close down those results and we'll move to the next section, which is analytics and risk assessment of complaints. So when you're looking at your complaint monitoring, you should be obviously monitoring those on a regular basis, but also categorizing those complaints. And this is really important because when you're looking at your analytics and seeing where your risk lies when it comes to complaints, uh, you, want, you want to consider gathering specific data points to know how to designate that information and how to know where your weaknesses are in your program. So the first bullet point there, location, where is the complaint? Where was it received or what location did it happen at? Or was there a certain location that was involved? Categorizing complaints in that manner allows you to see if there's a specific location that has an issue. Uh, a good example of that is, you know, for, uh, for one of my clients, I had they had decided, we're gonna take away the ATM in this location. And what happened was they got several complaints from people that had relied upon that source to get their cash out. So they figured, well, they'll just find another ATM. Well, it wasn't as easy for the older community in that, in that specific area that liked to drive down to the ATM and put their ATM card in and get their cash. So they soon found out that that was an issue for them and they actually put the, put the ATM machine back in. Um, they updated it even to make it, you know, better and easier to access. So, you know, those kinds of things are very important for categor categorizing your complaints. That's how you know, right? That's how you know. So then products and services, the products and services that you offer, how do you know which ones were impacted? What would, which ones are they complaining about? And being able to identify trends for specific products or services. 
you know, if you have an issue, a service that you're offering today where you're getting multiple complaints, it's time to take a look at that and really dive into the details of what is it about this service that is making people so unhappy? What is it about this product? Are we not doing things correctly? Are they just unhappy overall? And consider remediation of the product or service that's impacted if you're seeing trends like that. Service providers, again, back to the old service providers. If you've got multiple complaints about a specific service that a service provider is involved in, you wanna make sure that the correct people are involved in that and that you're getting feedback and remediation and follow-up with those service providers. Uh, it's important for them to know the issues are happening on their side, but it's also important for you when it comes to choosing service providers and going through your contract evaluations and deciding whether to continue to do business with them. So always make sure that you're keying in that information as well as appropriate when it when they are involved. Regulations. This is something that your compliance officer will be doing automatically, but it should be listed as something that you are capturing during the complaint process. So when your compliance officer is looking at these complaints, they want to see which regulations were affected. Maybe they had, you know, three complaints related to, you know, Reg Z or you know there was a bunch of complaints re related to reg cc and the hold notices you want to know that trend in, trending data so that your compliance officer can make the appropriate actions with your cms and making sure that um, you're identifying those and se or self-identifying those and taking action before the regulators come in departments and business processes that is also very important. Uh, which business processes were involved in the complaint, being able to really dive down into that process to see if improvements can be made to um, make people happier, make things easier, make things more efficient, and which departments were involved. So categorizing that allows you to have more visibility into the groups and departments that are being impacted. And then of course, any individuals. If you've got three complaints for one of your tellers at a single location, and it might be time to talk to that person and see what the deal is and, and really dive into the details of why that person might be getting so many complaints. So very important to monitor and categorize your complaints on a regular basis to be able to identify the weaknesses. And then risk assessment of complaints. Consider assessing the risk associated with the complaint and the impact to the organization. So assess the controls and mitigate accordingly. You need to look at the controls that are impacted and assess the risks and mitigate those um, on an ongoing basis. So it doesn't help you to be able to risk rate things and then not take action on those. You need to be able to see those higher risk areas need to be tied back to remediation of your program controls um, and of course business processes. Tie or link complaints to organizational risks to make better business decisions. So a lot of softwares out there will allow you to do that automatically, being able to link complaints to specific, um, even down to the controls or to your KRIs, KPIs, uh, down to service providers. Uh, you can tie or link complaints to your organizational risks as well within many software solutions. But if you're not, if you don't have a solution, then you need to make sure that you that you are tying those risks together to make sure that you're assessing those risks and those complaints are considered within risk assessments and risk considerations within your ERM program. That way, when there is time to make a decision, management's aware of that, so you can make better decisions based upon that information from the complaint. Escalate high risk complaints to the board and management. Again, so, so important that when you have higher risk complaints, that you give those, that information to the board. They're gonna wanna know the details of a higher risk complaint, but they're not gonna care so much if if somebody said the coffee was a little hot or that the branch is too cold. So when you risk rate your complaints, you know which ones to escalate and make, um, make that um, information available to the board and management and which ones you know, just need to be notated on the, on the spreadsheet or um, within your software or on your tracking and, and monitoring that really don't need to have a lot of attention to it. But when they are higher risk, they need to be brought to the board and management team. So that's another important element of why you should at least have a high, medium, low risk rating in, in place for your complaints. And then last but not least, document your assessment of the evaluation of complaints. So you should be writing that down. Uh, you know, take your assessment of the evaluation and make sure the complaint identifies where your risk lies. 
Uh, the last one, retention of complaint documentation. Uh, this is all about document, document, document. If you can't prove it, it didn't happen. So what kinds of information should you be saving and retaining? Uh, number one, original documentation of the complaint. Whatever the client, the member, the customer gave you, uh, keep it. Keep whatever it was, even if it was, uh, you know, I hate you note on the back of a, <laughs> a, an envelope or whatever it was. Keep that as your source document of the complaint. Uh, the correspondence and notes from the source of the complainant, any correspondence and response to the customer member, customer, or entity. So if there's any correspondence back, make sure it's in writing. You may talk to them and, and help them in, when they're at your teller line or when they call you on the phone. Make sure you follow up with that written documentation and keep it and retain it. Number two, all communication with the complainant. So any letters, emails, calls, or other interactions. When you do make a phone call, Write down the time and date that you did it and what you talked about, a, a quick summary of that, so that all your documentation is in one spot. So if anybody has any qualms or doesn't think that you handled the complaint uh, adequately, you have the backup for what you've done. Number three, research documentation. So whatever research you did on the client, what their relationship was with your organization at the time that they made their complaint, whatever research you did on the business unit that was impacted, the, the third party that was involved, whatever your research was, Keep that documentation, that source documentation of that, and make sure that you're writing it down, keeping screenshots or whatever the case may be. Your analysis of the documentation. So making sure that your analysis in you know, how you decided to remediate that is in the documentation as well. Uh, if there was a couple people that queued in to say their, you know, their, their um, advice on how you should handle the complaint, if there's multiple people involved, keep that email chain within your documentation to prove where you came to that conclusion. The review and approval process, if you do have that secondary review, uh, which again is a best practice to have a second pair of eyes on that or any kind of approval process, uh, maybe even by compliance, keep that as well to show that it's part of your process and you can prove that you've done it. And then of course the corrective action or remediation, whatever you've done, however you came to that conclusion needs to be saved and all of the dates and times of all correspondence. So, Whenever you did something, write down the date and time so you can prove that you've done it, who did it, what time it was done, all of that should be saved. Last polling question. We have one more here, and this is regarding your program overall. We are curious, how are you managing your complaint management program today? So go ahead and get ready to answer that final polling question. We've only got a few minutes left here, but are you doing that completely manually with spreadsheets and Word documents and email? Uh, do you have some automation or software? Uh, some manual process is still in place, so there's still a little bit of email in there, or do you have a completely automated software solution handling that for you today? So even the notifications to users that need to be involved are notified through a software solution. Uh, number four could be you just don't know what you're doing, and maybe that's why you're here. Maybe you're trying to figure out what to do. Uh, go ahead and answer now, and uh, we're just about done here. I think got a few more seconds. Vaughn, I'll let you let us know when we're ready. Okay, hey, yep, we're just, go ahead and get your votes in. This is your fourth and final poll for your CPE credits. Go ahead and get those votes in. Uh, we're gonna keep it open for about another barely 10 seconds. So go, 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 <laughs> get it on in. And looks like we're, yeah, we're, we're a little all over, which is great. Uh, it's consistent with the rest of the polls. So let's go ahead and close this poll down in three, two, and one. So I'll show this up. Yeah, because we just have about, about one minute left. So I'm gonna share this really quickly and let you go ahead and wrap it up. All right, perfect. Looks like 40% some automation and software. So most of you are doing some. Um, in second place there, completely manual spreadsheets. Uh, you know, if you if you are using those manual spreadsheets and Word documents, and you found some of the information in this webinar today to be helpful, it would be great for you to consider how can we automate this a little bit more and make it more efficient. So you may want to consider looking out there to see what kind of software may be best suited for your organization to help you get some automation and some consistency, most important, consistency in your program and your processes. So risks of non-compliance, you know what they are. They're here in the slides. We won't go too much into it because I know we just have another moment here, but examiner scrutiny, findings and recommendations, additional audits or exams, MOUs, enforcement actions, cease and desist, the worst of the worst. Never want any of that to happen. You can get penalties and fines. It could cost you a lot of money. Civil money penalties, you can get sued class action litigation, loss of business, 
And then of course, impact to your risk. Again, that risk rating is so important. Uh, legal and litigation risk, your reputation risk, especially on the social media platforms, compliance risk on the regulatory side, compliance officer must be involved, financial risk and transaction risk. So those are all the big ones and you wanna consider those within your program. Again, very, very important to make those considerations, review your program today and see where you're at. So again, I know we had a lot of content to go through today. We didn't have enough time to take any questions here, but please make sure that you enter in those questions into the question box if you have any, and we'll follow up with you after the webinar. And Vaughn, I think I'm all set. Back to you. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Sonia, for all that fantastic information. Definitely appreciate you coming on our platform and sharing your time, your expertise, and all that great information. And thank you to our attendees for being with us. We'll go ahead and process that CPE credit. We'll get that into your accounts. You should see that in about 24 hours. You have the recording, you have the handouts, and of course, an evaluation. We definitely want to hear from you. So go ahead and let us know. Should be in your inbox right now, and it's also in your CPA Academy account. Check out our schedule so you can see our future sessions because I hope to see you on one of them and have a great rest of your day. All right, bye everyone, see you next time.